Welcome back to another edition of We Rise Fighting Labor Podcast. We bring you today's labor news, history, and analysis from the U.S. and around the world. This is a podcast you listen to with your fellow workers organizing on the shop floor. This is a podcast you listen to before walking into your union meeting. As always, I'm Rico Rutia here with my co-host, Brian Pfeiffer. All right, what's up, everyone? And welcome to this special edition of We Rise Fighting Labor Podcast. And I say this is a special edition because in today's episode, we are going to research a question corporation or do a little bit of research at least because um, this is a, this is an area with a lot of area to cover uh, and a lot of ground to cover so um, but it's fun it's interesting and it's needed for the struggle and if you're here it's for a reason I hope you benefit from this uh, please send me any feedback or anything you would like and to we rise fighting labor podcast at gmail.com now I've been doing these presentations for many years now I think ever since 2005 I've been doing them and actually took a break from doing them for a long time. So it's been a minute, um, maybe a few or several years. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, nevertheless, over the years, I've always wanted to make it shorter and shorter and shorter because at the beginning, you know, one part of my presentation was like an hour and a half long. And uh, yeah, just looking back, I, I think I was just throwing out too much information. I think I was just too excited about some of the information I was uncovering and learning about it. And I think I've really narrowed it down. So yeah, going to try to keep it as brief as possible here on this episode and basically just lead you to some of the major documents where you want to start carrying out some research and what those documents are and what kind of information they contain that could be useful for any struggle, any social struggle, or a labor organizing campaign, a union organizing drive, Uh, if you're looking to map out international solidarity, stuff like that, uh, then you're you're in the right place. That's what this episode is about. That's what this information is for. And this information is all public and available to us to use freely. So if you want to turn around and write an article uh, with some of this information, that's what it's there for. You know, you don't need anyone's corporate, you don't need anyone's permission. The corporation can't turn around and sue you. This is public information that they write themselves. They themselves report this information. And that's also important because over the years, I have considered this particular work, these trainings on corporate research. These, to be quite frank, everyone, these have been my personal contribution to doing away with conspiracy theories because we don't need conspiracy theories. All the information is public. All the information is out there. All the information is damning enough. All right. It's just on us, people in the struggle, student activists, workers, community activists. It's just on us to find this information and present it to others in a way that's compelling and present it to others in a way that teases out the the contradictions between, say, a CEO making $50 million a year and a worker making $13 an hour, you know, not being able to afford rent, having five, six roommates, you know, so that we can start to make those types of connections, you know, so that we can start talking about a corporation's profits with authority without having to go to the Wall Street Journal or uh, the New York Times. No, the point of this, the point of this particular podcast is to show you how to get it directly from the horse's mouth. In other words, directly from the source. We're not going to a news magazine. We're not going to some bias uh, newspaper. No, we're getting it directly from the source, directly from the corporation. All right. So you can use this information and you should use this information and we should carry out exposures of what these corporations are doing because they're wrecking the planet. It It sucks to be alive right now and just work for these motherfuckers. Like, yeah, they're taking the fun away from being human, man. They're destroying the planet. So what we're trying to do here is find information and contradictions and soft underbellies and jugulars and understand their production and understand the weaknesses in production so we can exploit those weaknesses, so we can put pressure on them or affect them, rattle them somehow. Uh, So that's the whole point of this um, 
podcast, all right? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Again, this is all public information, and I hope it contributes to your struggle. Now, let's go ahead and really just start real simple. Let's go to google.com, all right? Now, I'm guessing you already have a corporation in mind that you're going to be researching. On my end, I'm going to keep it real simple with something that we, I, I'm going to say just about everyone recognizes, Amazon. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to type in Amazon Follow, followed by the words investor relations, okay? And what that should produce is a list of links, of course, and the top link should be the investor relations page for the corporation that you are researching, all right? In my case, of course, it's Amazon, so I'm going to go ahead and click on there. Now, each website, each corporation's website is going to be laid out differently. Um, I don't know exactly what you're looking at, but there is some consistent information in every investor relations page, all right? Now, I'm going to go through those things that are very consistent and that I look at first, all right? So the first thing that's going to pop out to me is SEC filings. There's a link for SEC filings, and SEC stands for Security and Exchange Commission. That's the government agency that's responsible for collecting and maintaining all this public information from corporations. So corporations report information on their finances, on properties, business strategies, uh, on their executives, information like that to uh, the Security and Exchange Commission. They're required to do so by law, and they have to follow a very specific form and disclose very specific information. All right. And some information is annual. Some information is quarterly. Um, one of the documents I recommend to look for under SEC filings, again, in the investor relations page, because you're not going to get this in the regular consumer page. So make sure you're on, you're on the investor relations page. So um, one, of the docu one of the documents that you're going to want to look for in here is the 10K report. Again, that's the 10K report. And that's an annual report that's submitted by a corporation to the Security and Exchange Commission. And usually this document document is about one, two, maybe 300 pages long. I don't know. They can be pretty long, but it's pretty long. They disclose a lot of information about their finances, a lot of very detailed information about their finances. Um, in some cases, more detail than we need. So I guess I'm just trying to communicate that if you need very detailed information about finances, you can go to a corporation's 10K report. All right. But there's other more simple ways to just get information like annual profits. And we'll get to that either later in the show or on another occasion. Now, we're not here to read these documents, these like one 200 page documents, like they're a book. All right, we're, we're here as researchers, all right? So we're not trying to read this stuff cover to cover. So don't even start to think that you're about to do that because I am here to stop you. I'm here to talk you out of that, all right? Because it's boring for starters and it's overwhelming. Like there's, that's not, that's not how you approach this, all right? What you want with a document such as the 10K report, you want to have a list of keywords handy. So what Whatever keywords are important for your struggle or whatever effort you're trying to uh, carry out or whatever media or education campaign you're trying to ca carry out, you want to have some keywords handy. So that way you can use a control F function. In other words, a control find function. Type in those keywords and find information on those keywords. So for me, I have a whole list of stuff that I've you know used over the years and I actually keep a list of, I don't know, maybe like 80, 90 words that I look for regularly when I'm trying to do this kind of research. So I look for words like lawsuit or legal in case there's legal trouble for the corporation. I look for words like stoppage as in work stoppage or agreement as in collective bargaining agreement or government or work uh, injuries or risk or shareholders or deaths or debt 
or emissions or environment or executive, also the word ownership, also, also the term net income. That's an important one that you should keep in mind. Net income is the financial ease. In other words, the fancy way of saying profits. Okay. And again, um, a document like the 10K report will have information on net income, but they'll have it, you know, th 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 there'll be a lot of information on net income because corporations typically just break it down in, in many ways, like net income coming from operations, net income coming from sales, net income coming. So they break it down. In, so I'm going to recommend another way to get a very basic profits um, number, very basic profits figure that is still coming from the corporation, but that you don't have to search through the 10K report. But it is handy to know that all that information is on there, all right? Also, in this section, if you know finance, finances a little bit, this is a place where you can find the cash flow statement, the income statement, and also the balance sheet. So um, if you're not into finances or have never explored it, you know, that's those are the three big documents. Those are the three pillars of financial reporting <clears throat> is the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. And if you do want to geek out on it, you can get net income. You can find profits in the income statement in that particular document, okay, if you decide to go down that route. So that's one of the documents that you can find in the SEC filings section of any corporation. Another one is the proxy statement, and the proxy statement is useful for two things. The proxy statement contains information on the next annual meeting that will take place for shareholder, the, the, the annual shareholder meeting. Uh, so it will give you the time, location, or will tell you the logistics of it, the agenda behind it, you know, um, it, when, like how votes are being calculated, stuff like that. You'll get that in the proxy statement. So that's one good thing to look for in the proxy statement in case you ever want to interrupt uh, an annual meeting sh of shareholders, something like like that. You know, I think it's, you know, if, if, if it makes sense as part of your strategy, or if it makes sense to just observe and see what they're talking about and record the meeting, you know, and expose the types of things that they talk about in these meetings, you know, sometimes all it takes is to own one share in a corporation to be able to participate in these meetings. So say a share costs, I don't know, I'm making this up, $500, $1,000 or something within reason for either you or your organization or your union, if it's something that's within reason that's affordable and that could pay off um, by allowing you to attend a shareholders meeting, then that's where you find the information on when, where, and how to participate in the shareholders meeting. Uh, the second thing that I always look for in the proxy statement is executive compensation, which just as it suggests, it's the compensation for executives. It's uh, how much the CEOs make per year and what those benefits packages look like. And if they own shares in the cor corporation, It'll let you know there. So those are the two things, that, two main things that I look for in a proxy in the proxy statement. Now, of course, there's much more information on in the proxy statements and the 10K reports, and I'm going to leave that to you to explore for now. And again, really, I'm going to encourage the keywords. We are not here to read these like books. That's not what we're. That's not what we're here to do. We're here looking for very specific information. We're looking for the jugular, the soft underbelly whatever you want to call it. Um, I often think about it, uh, of it as from, if you remember the Empire Strike strikes back. If you remember those big, like the mechanical cows with the cannons on their mouths, like when they're, when they were going through, um, Hoth, the plan, the ice planet of Hoth with the big mechanical, I don't know what they the big, big mechanical cows. I don't know what to call them. All right. But nevertheless, when, uh, one of the rebel fighters decided to shoot a rope, a magnetic rope up against one of the legs and entangle this big old beast and just tangle it up. Um, that's what we want. That's what we're looking for because then it just comes crashing down on its face. That's the type of information that we're looking for and that's why the key words are so important. Do not read this like a book and it's not entertaining. And a lot of these, a lot of this, let me say this also real clear. Because if you're actually going through with this episode and going through these documents, you'll find a lot of financial information. And I just want to reassure everyone, you know, this is all 
abstract, intangible shit. This is all the abstract, intangible shit and measurements that capitalism uses to keep itself legitimate, to, 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 to legitimize itself, all right, to keep trying to convince us that it's a real thing. But come on, like it took me years to understand what it meant to own a share of a stock because it just does not make sense. How are you going to own a piece of a corporation and be entitled to its benefits even though you don't work a day there in your life how how are you entitled to the benefits the profits because you own you have a piece of paper that just says you own a piece of a piece of a corporation like how how does that make sense and all of these financial reports you know are based on that idea it doesn't make sense. It's abstract. It's intangible. But there's certain things that we do need to know, all right? And there's certain places where we already know enough, all right? So if we know the word profits, boom, we're rolling. We, we already know what kind of information that we're looking for. And now you know on top of that, if you didn't already know, that net income is the phrase to look for, all right? So we know to look for net income when, or profits. We know to look for revenues uh, because revenues are sales and they give us an idea of the size of a corporation, all right? So if you ever hear about, um, you know, Corporation XYZ saying that they're a $500 billion corporation, that $500 billion figure is usually sales, is usually revenues, all right? And again, you can find revenues in the income statement and you can find the income statement in the 10K report and other places, all right? But again, if you just want the size of a corporation and the net income, the profit, there is a better, simpler place to look for it. Two other things that I look for in the investor relations page is the annual report and press releases. Now, let's go ahead and start with the annual report. I encourage you to go ahead and find it if you're doing this for the first time. And what that is, is it's basically like a more polished version of the 10K report. And there's a big difference. The 10K report gets submitted to the Security and Exchange Commission, as I already had mentioned. And the Security and Exchange Commission provides legal guidelines of what needs to be reported to them, uh, either quarterly or annually or, you know, whatever the case may be for that document. Okay, okay. there's guidelines to what needs to be legally recorded and reported um, to the Security and Exchange Commission. The annual report gives corporations a little bit more freedom because this is um, the top-level management, this is the CEOs, this is the board of directors communicating mostly with the shareholders but also with potential shareholders and all also presenting information in the way that they want to present it. All right. This is all these documents I should mention. All of these documents are also where journalists go to get their information and historians and um, legal experts and anyone needing quote unquote legit information because we're getting it directly from the source, right? We're getting it directly from the horse's mouth. Here we are in the investor relations page of the corporation that you're researching looking at the their information as they recorded and reported it. You know, there's no bias here. We're not getting it from the New York Times. We're not getting it from Fox News. We're not getting it from a Google search, although there are legitimate places to get um, this precise information through a Google search. We're not doing it like that. All right. We're doing it directly from the corporation's investor relations page. All right. Uh, also typical on an investor relations page is information on corporate governance, um, press releases. I always look at press releases to get more up to date information. And also quarterly results is another good thing to look at for more up to date information. And what quarterly results is, is just quarterly communications, financial information, um, other types of information that would be useful to its investors. Um, and by quarterly, all that means is uh, they divide the year into four quarters. So three month, you know, groups of three months. And they report every three months. So it, it's only that current. It's not like to the day, um, but it is 
that current. So that's also useful. So I do encourage going through that sort of thing. Now, again, let me go back to the financial stuff because this was my experience when I started researching. I really geeked out on the financial information. I really wanted to understand the financial ease and like really tear into the guts of capitalism and kind of understand it and speak its own language and stuff like that. I really have to underscore the, uh, the idea that if you know profits, and again, net income, if you know profits, if you know revenues, if you know debt, and I know your working class ass knows debt. If you know those three terms, if you know those three ideas, you already have a good start in this. You know, Over the years, it just hasn't been useful for me to retain this information and just speak, um, you, you know, have this financial jargon roll off my tongue. This is the abstract stuff that holds capitalism together. These are, these are the abstract measurements that legitimize, quote unquote, uh, capitalism for everyone, you know, these measurements. So the fact that you don't understand these or, you know, don't know, don't understand these off the bat. Hey, no problem. But, you know, everyone be cool to yourself. But yeah, get the information that you do need, you know, get the information that you do need. And if you do need to delve deep, then go ahead and do that. You know, one of the one of the websites that I recommend if you are going deeper and like need a more deeper understanding of some of these terms and jargon and financial ease, I recommend this website called investopedia.com. And they actually have a glossary for a lot of these terms. That's if you need to go there, if you need to go there. You know, over the years that I, I've learned that I've just overcomplicated the process by getting too deep on stuff like that. But there is some stuff that's handy, like profits from operations, for instance. All right. I will highlight that one because that one will tell you exactly how much profits or net income um, workers are generating through their labor in a corporation. All right. So stuff like that. Also, assets. Assets may be a good thing to look at. Um, and it's, again, on all of these documents. And again, if you're looking for information on assets, control F assets within the 10K report, within the annual report. And assets gives you an idea of, you know, how much like material, like actual tangible shit they own. They own. Uh, so like fleets and buildings and stuff like that, you know, it gives... <clears throat> It's good for understanding that. So I think that for today, we're at about 20 minutes, so just a little over 20 minutes. I'm going to leave it at that um, and just cover you know, the SEC filings under the investor relations page, as well as annual reports. We also talked about quarterly reports, corporate governance. You can find information on there. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to leave it at that because I think that's a good starting point. I think that'll get some people going. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to email the podcast, email me again. If you, if we haven't met already, my name is Rick Urrutia and you can email me at we rise fighting labor podcast at gmail.com. I hope this episode has been somewhat useful. Again, this is just, this is just a starter. Um, I want to definitely get, uh, more geeked out on this, um, maybe with some, uh, corporations that are hitting the news lately, or maybe some strikes that are, uh, taking place, maybe do, do it in solidarity with the striking workers, stuff like that. Um, but nevertheless, I just wanted to share this much just to demystify this. All right. Just to let you know where we get the information from. It's all public information, why we get the information, because we want to find the juggler. We want to find the soft underbelly. We want to bring out those contradictions and put it out in our community, put it out in the workplace and call these corporations out on their bullshit. You know, how dare you make a hundred million dollars while you're not paying your workers even 15, still in 2024, they begrudgingly give $15 an hour to work. They're mad about that. They're mad about that. All right. So that's the world that we live in. Rent is rent keeps going up. You know, the cost of food keeps going up. And here's the type of information that we need to give more fight to some of our struggles. So I hope this has been beneficial. I'm going to keep doing more of these. Um, I, you can also expect uh, another episode to focus on political connections and political contributions. So corporations and what political candidates they give their money to, you know, and just 
the whole web of that, but I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. So um, we're at about 25 minutes. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, Thank you for listening. I hope this was useful. Have a good night, everyone. Love and solidarity to all. Thank you.